Hello, everybody. How you doing? How's everybody doing this fine evening? No Game of Thrones tonight, so I don't have to jump off here stupid early like I usually do. I don't have to start stupid early. Let me pull up your uh, chats here so I can see what everybody's saying. <clears throat> and there we is. Oh, come on. Don't tell me about all your new features, YouTube. I just want to see what's going on. Hello. All right. We are live. I already got a few of you on here. Awesome. 16 or so. Very, very cool. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. Bruising Blades. This is not Bruising Blades this uh, this this time. This is the last the last Sunday of the month. So it's Booze and Blades. So I'm not drinking a beer. I'm going to drink some actual proper booze. I have a beer here also because I don't have that much of the proper booze that I want to drink. Because I don't know if you guys watched the last time I did this. My wife got me a cool little uh, gift set for my birthday. And it was a bunch of Balvenie scotch. Uh, this is the last one I have left. There was three of them in there. I drank the other two while I was on with you guys. Uh, this is the Caribbean cask. You guys said this was the best. And uh, and I held, it, I held it back. What are your thoughts on that 940? You hate yours. I think you're a crazy person. Um, I love my 940. And that's a very, very good one. Um... Got some Maker's Mark on deck. Yeah, Maker's Mark is very, very good. I almost went and bought That's actually what I was thinking about buying a bottle of today, but instead I remembered I had this. So we'll go through this, and then uh, I'll switch to beer when this is all gone. Just doing it neat today. Just doing it neat. Ooh, that does smell good. Caribbean cask. Mmm. I've never had this before. I don't know what makes it Caribbean cask. Mmm. That is very, very good. Very, very good indeed. Slam it. You know, normally I would, but I'm on, uh, I'm on with you fellas, so I'll, I'll be nice and take my time with it. Um, yeah, it is. It does taste kind of rummy. That's if I had to guess. A guess? If I had to guess, that's what I would say. Mmm. It smells delicious. I can tell you that. It tastes good, too. You want the ZTO562, you should. Jack Sparrow spat it. Don't tell me that, I'll get hepatitis or something. I get hepatitis. Um, I forgot to bring something out here. Oh, we're going to be a bit slightly unprepared here this time, but um, I am going to do a giveaway tonight because uh, Weeha resupplied me. You guys remember I used to always do the Weeha giveaways, and uh, I, I haven't been for a while because I ran out, and... Um, Weha resupplied me, so uh, this is just one of the uh, uh, tens. But I am going to be giving away a set of a T6, T8, T10. I, I turn these little two packs into three packs and uh, send them out. So uh, I'm going to do a trivia question here in a little bit once we get more people on here, like I used to do, like back in the old days, doing a callback, and then uh, you guys can win something. I already know what the question is going to be. I am that prepared. I just forgot to package one of these up because they literally just came in uh, like uh, yesterday. So, um, yeehaw for weehaw. That should be their slogan. That should be their slogan. That's a good idea. ZTO562CF is awesome. I've never had the CF. I just I just got this one. You got a mass drop down, a Benchmade bug out. That's not a, not a bad couple to get in the mail. How's the schism? Pretty good. I already did a review on it, but uh, yeah, I'm still carrying it. It's very, very nice. I wish I'd have carried it yesterday. I was debating between this and uh, the Anthem, and I carried the Anthem to uh, my in-law's house. They had their Memorial Day weekend party thing, and um, I, I knew one of my in-laws was a knife guy, and I, I, I pulled mine out, and I he asked what it cost, and I told him what it actually retails for. <laughs> I got mocked incessantly. Don't don't carry a four hundred and thirty dollar knife to your in law's house. Nobody's gonna think it's cool. They're just gonna tell you how you're all stupid for carrying knives that expensive. Um, yeah, it's working out pretty good. I'm I'm getting uh, the I still find that the thumb studs are a bit too sharp. Well, quite a bit too sharp. But other than that, uh, it's working good. I think my fingers are getting callous to it, but I am really liking it. It's very nice. I wish it was a bit more drop shutty, but with that, it's just physics with that blade. 
it's it's going to be really really hard to get it super ultra drop shutty. The only thing I've ever held with a blade that light, and it may not even it's still probably heavier than that. The Shamwari is very drop shutty, but I think even the Shamwari blade's a little a little heavier than that. Best fingernails in the game. I just I just can't stand when my fingernails get long, so I do I do trim them, but I trim them with giant toenail clippers. So, I've, and I I don't know. It must be whatever I'm eating makes them shiny. Um, at least it wasn't a Sabenza. No, this costs as much as a Sabenza. It's 430 retail. I did not pay that for it. I will tell you that right now. But um, yeah, they were. Uh, I should have just lied, and said it was way cheaper. I almost brought this. This is cheaper. I might not have gotten as much crap for. What are these two something? I don't remember what it costs now. Um, 227. Uh, from Canada, if I win, I can pass. No, I'll show, I'll mail them to Canada. That's something that's not going to get caught. I don't mind the shipping costs. It's not that much for me to mail to Canada. I'm not that far from the border. It's just that uh, knives always get you know rejected and all this stuff. So realistically, how does the D2 on the artisan knives hold up rust wise? I don't know. I don't. Um, I don't. Uh, I've had artisans in D2, but not enough to really, really comment on that. See, you wear basketball short type deals, and nobody gives you any problem with that, but I said I wear tennis shorts, and people give me crap about it for months. Um, you're saying curry worst makes shiny nails? It might. It could be that. It could be that. Why don't I own a Sabenza? Uh, I had one, and um, I sold it because uh, it was when I was, A, it was when I was first getting the channel started. So I just wanted to get stuff to review, and that was like three more knives if I sold it. And B, uh, I really don't like the, um, I don't mind that it's not meant to be super, yeah, yeah, Ray Raymond's got it, Ramon's got it. Um, I don't mind that it's not meant to be super flicky, but I was always squeezing that, the, uh, the pocket clip on the lock bar, and I could never make myself stop doing it, and it was really annoying. Thanks, Sean, I appreciate it on the... The little super chat things, I always forget to mention that. Coworker freaked out when you told him he paid 90 bucks for a recall. Yeah, people just don't get it. <laughs> if you and Metal Complex had a baby, I'd be him, Slicey Complex. Well, I don't I don't think that's physically possible. And uh, I, that's not that's not my thing. Uh, it, I, I've seen Metal Complex. He's, he's a handsome man, but uh, it's just not my not my deal. Um, so I'm sorry. That's never gonna happen. And we you wear we already have you, so why would we make another one? Um, I, uh, Mikey, I would use uh, I don't oh it's right here. I like to have it. This stuff, if you want your D two not to rust, EDCI formula, they give me nothing, and I recommend recommend this stuff all the time. Uh, really, really great, really, really great stuff. Uh, it's just like it says, spray on, rub in, wipe off. It's food safe now. The new ones even say uh, food safe on it. Uh. They were waiting until they got actually FDA certified, and now they do. So, yeah, this stuff is great. It is food safe. Yeah, it, it was. It used to say food safe, and then when the new people took it over, they took it off because it hadn't been certified. Now it is. So the new ones do say food safe, um, and it's it's really good stuff. I I swear by it. I put it on almost anything I decide to keep, even if um, it is supposedly rust proof. Um. Not touching that one, Nico. Mineral oil will protect it. Yep, it will too. But you don't have to. You don't have to put it on and off uh, as much. The EDCI will just stay on there. You don't have to. You know, every like it felt like mineral oil every time I really hard used it, it was all gone. So uh, I just put the, the EDCI is awesome. I can use it and not worry about it. And it's cheap. I think that bottle is like twelve bucks or something like that. And I've been using the hell out of it. And yeah, it's like what an eighth gone at the most. Um. Oh yeah, Birdshot just posted a video. Yeah, we, uh, Birdshot and I always go up at 8 o'clock, it seems like. We're on the same production schedule. Um, uh, oh, what else? It's about, uh, did, I ever, did I ever buy a Spidey Chef? No, I didn't. I still want to, but every time I'm ready to, something else comes up. Again, I'm, I review stuff, so a lot of times I'll... Buying one Spidey Chef for me to use that isn't going to be good video content is hard to justify when I could go buy three or four more knives that you guys would rather watch. So, I do that. 
You freak out when people pay three hundred dollars for shoes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I pay I pay a hundred something for shoes. I just bought actually I had an REI coupon, so they were like ninety five bucks. But yeah, I usually pay like one thirty something for shoes. I have horrible feet though, so I need good shoes. I just got a pair of new Keen Targi uh, Vents. Oh my god, they're awesome! I actually posted a picture. I got. I don't remember what the knife was. I got a knife and the shoes the same day, and I posted on Instagram on the knife Instagram on my Slicing Dicey seventy five at on Instagram if you want to follow me too, by the way. Um, and I did the uh, and more people asked me about the shoes. A lot of closet keen people, I think. A lot of keen shoe fans in the knife world, it seems, because the vents are new and they are awesome. Um, yeah, or even more money for a shirt with a word on it. My, uh, I'm going to take another sip of my scotch. I have an adopted Japanese sister. I think I mentioned her before. Kind of adopted. It's a long story. She was an exchange student. She just stayed. Um, and uh, her brother used to send pictures from Japan of him and his friends on their little crotch racket motorcycles with leather jackets they bought that just had random English words on them. And I remember his said grass concrete sky and it was just hilarious he was wearing like this leather multicolor leather motorcycle racing jacket that he probably spent five hundred dollars on and it just said glass or grass concrete sky <laughs> i just thought that was so funny <laughs> spidey chef or capara um i i like i i don't know i there's something a bit more special about the spidey chef but uh, the capara is it is it's just as good it's just as good. I would say Kapara, probably. Which is probably why I don't have a Spidey Chef, because I have a Kapara and I love it. Yeah, Tourette's jackets. Um, you only wear Croc flip-flops. I'm gonna, um... I'm just, I'm just not gonna make fun of you about Crocs. I used, yeah, New Balance, I used to like New Balance sneakers a whole lot. Now I don't really wear sneakers very much, because my feet suck so bad. I usually wear... Keen Targi high top boots or these new Keen vents or I have a pair of Keen sneakers. But when I when I play tennis, I wear Asics because um, I don't like the New Balance tennis sneakers. But when I just had regular kicking around sneakers, New Balances are pretty good. Yeah, I think New Balance is pretty great. Yeah, Sprint Run Compar and LC200 would be very sweet. That would be awesome. But then it's got stainless steel liners that might still theoretically rust, so it might not go that. Uh, would you use the 781 Anthem as an everyday carry knife? I do. I carry it all the time. Uh, do you like Wanda Sykes? Wanda Sykes is hilarious. She's very, very funny. Never met her, but uh, she's a very, very funny woman. Um, grass, concrete, sky. Tucson TS41. I don't do anything with two suns. I'm thinking about it, but I just never have. I don't have back problems. I just get sore feet. Wanda Sykes is hilarious in everything. Even when she's on talk show, she's hilarious. She's, uh, the club I work at is very big for a comedy club, but she's so huge, she doesn't do comedy clubs anymore. So the odds that I'll ever meet her are slim to none. Uh, thoughts in the spider coat with coochie. I'm interested in it. I not enough that I've actually bought one, but um, I'm gonna check it out on a blade show, and who knows, maybe I'll like it enough to buy one. Will you ever cross into the Ganzo territory? I cannot fathom a day when I would. Um, it would have to be probably years from now. They still do. They still do copies and clones and homages and all that bullshit, and I'm just not not dealing with it. Is a 781 a knife you can use for everyday cutting e needs? Yep. Yeah, definitely. I do. I, I, You know, I'm not a super heavy-duty user, so keep that in mind. I always try and caveat stuff with that. I'm not... I don't work on a construction site or anything like that. I'm mostly just, uh, you know, sitting in front of a computer most of the day. And I spend a lot of time outdoors and stuff, but I'm not... A, and I do knife testing to um, for purposefully testing them, but... um. You heard about the bailout having issues? Are you talking about Steve's little video he just put up? I, I glanced at it. I don't know. Um, uh, I watched it. Yeah, it, it broke. It's not. It's it's a lightweight knife. I'm not. I don't know what you you put a two ounce knife up against giant heavy duty 
Emersons and Striders, yeah, it's going to break. Wasn't at all surprised by it. Um, and the Strider even, that broke the tip off. So if you're doing stuff that's going to break the Strider off a tip, yeah, it's going to, it's a, a bailout's not going to handle it. That's completely unsurprising. Um, yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Oh, Bart Starr died. It hid your comment because you did a swear, but I'm going to show it. That sucks. Uh, oh, yeah, the heat treat's a little soft, but I thought their explanation of why they did it that way made sense to me. But, um, but I know some people expect 3V to be, you know, maximum awesomeness heat treat, but whatever. Oh, he was 85. Wow. Man, I feel old. I wouldn't have thought Bart Starr was that old. It's too bad. Yeah, the bailout's a light use knife. I don't think, yeah, it's more tactically than the, um, than the, uh, in styling than the bug out, but heard of any Paisan problems? I'm in a group with some other, uh, reviewers, all of which have them, and, uh, the detent has varied a bit. Um, that's all I've really heard about. And it, what sucks on an integral, you can't adjust that. You can't, like, take it apart. Like on, for example, you know, like the 0562 tie, I can, if the detent's a little weak, I, I could tweak it, you know, take it apart and tweak it or bend it out if it's a little stiff. You you could play with it. I'm not saying you should do that unless you know what you're doing, but you could. But on an integral, I mean, this is a, this is a, a access lock, so it doesn't matter. But, yeah, you can't bend anything. You can't bend it one way or the other. So it's... um. It kind of sucks that way. Um, as long as the knife can open boxes of new knives, then I'm okay. I mean, I want to be able to do more than that, but I don't expect all of uh, all of everything to be as tough as everything else. I just think that's stupid to think that it's gonna that you're gonna buy a a super lightweight knife like go oh, right here like for instance like buying this McKenna and thinking it's gonna hold up you know to the same kind of things that even like this 940 is gonna yeah it's not gonna happen it's just not gonna happen they're not designed for that I yeah I guess the only problem that I have with uh the attitude of some places, and I'm not talking about Steve. I like Steve. Steve and I are actually friends. I'm not really talking about Steve with this, but um, uh, and I know we just mentioned Steve, so it sounds like I am, but I'm not. Um, I I like Steve a lot. Um, but the glee and just finding something wrong with something is just ridiculous. They just get so super excited when something's not right, and I hate that. I really do. I hate it. It's just. I, I, I don't like that whole attitude. I've been reviewing stuff for a lot, a lot of years. And yeah, if something's bad, I'm going to say it's bad. But, you know, I just I just don't like when people are like, woohoo, yay, something's bad. I get to talk about it. It's just, all right, fine, knock yourself out. Um, thoughts on the TRM Adam? I have one coming. I don't know if I'm going to get it before Blade or pick it up at Blade. I'm hoping I'm getting it before. I'm hoping I'm going to have a video about, about that before Blade. I'm hoping I'm going to get it like late this week, but we will see. We will see. Yeah, different blades, different applications. But I get why I get why Steve was like that with the bailout, because the uh, Benchmade brought it on themselves. They, they market it like it's a tactical knife. It's a black series and all that, and it's clearly, you can tell, it's not going to hold up to tactical type things. I mean, you know that. It, it's but that's what they marketed it as, so yeah. You know, I I get I get why Steve that's why I'm not lumping Steve in with this. I'm just saying what he did. Yeah, I get it. it they very bad marketing on their part to call that a tactical knife when it's just a lightweight what 2.1 ounce knife or whatever it is. Yeah, and they put an aluminum pommel on it and yeah, I didn't like it. If you watch the review of it, I didn't I wasn't super hot on it and I don't have it. I traded it away. So, I'm not a big fan of the bailout either. I love the I love the bug out. Absolutely love the bug out. But the bailout did didn't do anything for me. Um, how's the apple juice? It's actually Scotch. Where is it? It is um, Belvini Caribbean cask. And I am Scottish. And if you call Scotch apple juice, I will throw down. I'll give you a Scottish headbutt. The old uh, Glasgow kiss. 
uh, have I seen the giant mouse Clyde? Yeah, I did see it on um, on the YouTubes. Looks uh, looks pretty cool. It is one I will definitely want to check out. Yeah, Balvenie is very good stuff. Apple scotch is that a thing? It sounds disgusting. Uh, oh, Zach's here. Hey, Zach, how's it going, man? I do like apple juice, though. Apple juice is good. Best juice ever, though. I got it first when I lived in Germany, but you can get it here, too. Um, they, it was called multivitamin juice over there. I don't remember all the stuff. It's got, like, orange and apple and grapefruit and carrot. I know it's got a lot of carrot juice in it. Over here, there's a company that sells it. I can't remember the name of the company. It's called Morning Blend. Oh my god, it's so good. It's the best juice like in the morning. It just feels like a vitamin B shot. You drink it and, like you can feel like Wah! like powering you up. It's awesome. Bourbon beer is definitely a thing that is very, very good. There's a, a beer company here that my friends own. Uh, Three Heads. You see, I drink their stuff on here a lot. And we've talked a few times about them making a beer with my name on it. And um, uh, for because of comedy stuff, not because they watch the Knife Channel. <laughs> but uh, um, I want it to be a bourbon stout. So if they ever do a bourbon stout, that's what I'm going to, they're going to put my name on it. I don't know what it's called yet. We floated some names, but if they ever make a bourbon stout, but you got to get the barrels and everything. It's, it's kind of a pain in the butt to make bourbon stout, but um, what's that juice? It's something or other morning blend. If you're asking about the juice I was talking about, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know what everybody's talking about. I'm lost. What other knives did I want to talk about? Yeah, these were the two ones I got in this week. I did a reviews of. Um, I got them in like the day after I did this show uh, last Sunday. And then I've got, um, this week I've got... Uh, I shouldn't have got any more before Blade Show, but I spent a little bit of money and got... Um, the Kaiser Mini Domine and the um, uh, Kaiser Zip Slip G10. I had the Titanium Zip Slip. I sold it. I wished I hadn't have, so I got the G10 one. The new N690. I think they're both on 690. I believe maybe the... Uh, excuse me. The Mini Domine is on 690 also. Ever had a heady topper? I don't think I have. Uh, um, yeah, bourbon stout is worth the hassle. It's really, really good. Actually, the best one I've ever had, I think, was uh, it's just Goose Island, which isn't anything super fancy, but uh, Goose Island, uh, they made a bourbon stout, which is oh, it was still good. Bring out something else. What else do I got come up this week? I'm gonna do a review on this. Um, this is the American Buffalo Knife and Tool, or ABKT uh, Warhog. I just recorded it, like, right before this started. I said the name 50 times. You'd think I'd remember it. Uh, very cool little knife. Well, very cool, fairly large size knife. I do like that a lot. And um, uh, tomorrow I'm uh, is going to be all the... All the uh, Isham Civivis. I promised I'd do a little overview of all three together. So I'm putting that up. So the Plethoros, the Anthropos, and the the uh, McKenna. So, um, oh, this is uh, this is our trivia question. I got to do this. We can do our giveaway. I almost forgot. Do not reply in the live section because everybody's going to see it and I can't pick you. So wait until the video is over. And then down below, reply with the your um, your guess or correct answer, probably. A lot of people are going to get correct answers because you see a few and then you look at it and then you just copy it, you figure it out, blah, blah. But um, And then I'm going to do a random drawing on the next one. The next live one won't be till after Blade Show, right? I will... No, wait. Will I still be... No, I'll still be here. I still have one more before Blade Show. So right before Blade Show, I'll do another one and I'll do a drawing. We'll do another one. And then I will send you a set of, this is only two, but uh, I just didn't have a chance to pack them up. Uh, Weeha sent me a ton of them and they come in these two packs. You're going to get a six, a T6, a T8, and a T10 of these cool little wrenches. And I will send them out to your door. Here's the question. Here's the question. 
Now, usually I try and be good and I make it something that I didn't mention in the video or that I did mention in a video so that you can go back and watch a video. But this one you're actually going to have to look up. Uh, I did, it is mentioned a few places online. I forgot to put it in the video. Uh, Elijah Isham named this knife the McKenna. Uh, what is the McKenna after? Who is it named after? I will say it is a person. But who is the McKenna that it is named after? It's not my daughter. That's my daughter's name. But uh, spelled differently. But that is my daughter's name. But uh, that's not who it's named after. But remember, don't put it in the live thing. Don't put it in the live thing. Wait till the video's over. Put it in the comments down below. And then next week I will draw somebody and they'll win a little set of Weehaw tools. Somebody asked me to flip this. I will do that with pleasure because it is a lot of fun. It's so easy. This is definitely like the easiest front flipper ever. It is so easy. So easy. Hey, Steve, we were just talking about you. I was just talking about your... Uh, everybody's asking what I thought of your bailout video. And I said, wow, shocking. A two-ounce knife didn't compete with a Strider and Emerson. What a big shocker that was. No, so who's it named after? Yeah, that is your trivia question. Wait till the video's over. Put it down before, or put it down in the comments down below. And it is, uh, it is, yeah. Who did who did he name the Savivi McKenna after? Super Steel Steve, breaker of knives, first of his name. I'm almost out of scotch already. Those little bottles don't go as far as they used to. I have to switch to beer. You were just having fun. I was just. And I told them, I get why you did it, because um, <laughs> Steve and I know each other. We get all sassy on each other constantly. No, I get why you did it, because it is kind of dumb that they ma they market it as a super ultra tactical thing. It, it's more tactical than the bail or than the bug out, but uh, yeah, that's what I was drinking is the Caribbean cask. It's very tasty, but it's almost gone now. Almost gone. Almost gone. It is delicious. I'm going to have to get a proper bottle of this, though. This is the last from that little gift set my wife got me. For my birthday, my father was an amazing man, but he used to always say birthday, and it drove me insane. Any hinderers in the stable? Yeah, I've got a half track. Where is it? I don't know where I placed it last. I don't think it's in its proper case because I had it out the other day. Oh, it is. There it is. Yeah, this is my, my hinderer. I love, I love the half track. It's so nice. It's such a goodly thing. I kind of want a full track, but I don't know. Um, somebody asked me, do you consider the 7777 as ugly? No, I, I, I don't. I don't think it's like the best looking thing in the world, but I don't think it's bad looking. But, but it's 3V steel. Yeah, but who cares what it's, it's attached to plastic handles and it weighs two ounces. But yeah, I get how people would get the wrong idea that we're just shopping around for sure. I didn't get to watch your whole video because I didn't see it until I was setting up for this and it's like an hour long. But I did skip around for it because I knew people would ask me about it. So I skipped around a bit. And I saw you break your strider, which gave me secret joy. I've never even held a Strider. You have a full track and a half track. What will be your next hinder? Well, probably an XM18. I kind of want to try one of those new XM18 skinnies, um, the liner lock ones. I kind of want to try it when I'm at Blade Show. Well, I, I will when I'm at Blade Show, but uh, that might be my next hinder or be one of those. Although I think if I buy anything expensive, quote unquote expensive for me at Blade Show, got all the, a lot of the guys I'm hanging out with play, are going there to drop, you know, two grand on stuff. Um, but uh, the, the more, the expensive knife I'm probably going to buy there is, uh, uh, yep. Well, I keep going back and forth. It'd be a, a probably a Medford Slim Midi. No, Slim Midi, the Dress Marauder is a little too, too short. I think I would get the, uh, just got your first Strider. I may have found a custom Strider MSG3. I don't know what that one is off the top of my head. Yeah, the skinny liner lock XM18s look pretty sweet. 
that could dissuade me from a slim midi, but. Do you go live now too, Steve? I didn't notice that. I don't get the notifications for that. I'm subscribed to you. I got the notification for your video earlier, but I don't ever get one when you go live if you do. Um. Well, sorry you had a bad Hinder experience. I never met Rick yet. I'm excited to. I, I know for sure I'm going to. I think I'm actually meeting him Thursday night before the Blade show even starts. I was supposed to do something with somebody else, and he's supposed to be there. So we will see. I'd love to meet him because I am have become a quite a Hinderer fan over the last... Uh, what, year, I think? No, not even that. Seven, eight months. I used to think... I, I once said nothing that Rick Hinderer designs introduce, or, in, interests me at all, and now I love Hinderers. <laughs> and, like, I went from zero to loving them within uh, six months. I love the half-track. I just think the half-track is just... It's, it's one of my favorite knives that I have. It's just awesome. It's uh, short, but it's so bulky that it doesn't feel short. So it winds up being, um, yeah, ever since the tryway. But, uh, yeah. I carry the half-track, yep. I, I will carry it that day, for sure. For sure. I think this might be the most expensive one they make, maybe? It's one of the most expensive, like, ones you can regularly get. This is the USA Made Blade full titanium version. I know they're pretty pricey. I can't remember what this was. I did said in the review. Six? Something like that? I can't remember. I don't normally like stuff that pricey, but this this is this feels so tough. I don't worry about it. it. It'll be fine. Yeah, and then I've got I just put it away, just set it aside. The 0562 tie is probably the knife I carry the most, which is a hinderer, you know, design. Have you ever handled or reviewed the hinderer slippy? I handled one. Um, I have a friend of mine uh, who lives nearby who uh, buys a lot of knives for a couple of his foreign friends and then ships them out and. One of his friends had ordered one, so I got to handle one a little bit. They're pretty cool. Oh, you got an Evo Typhoon? Yeah, I wish I'd have gotten one of those. And I just, the, the single day they were available, I, I just didn't have the cash. But I really wanted one. Those Typhoons are awesome. And in any of their forms, they're so cool. Um, XM Skinny Slicer or Sheep's Foot? I, I would, I already had a slicer, so... I'd probably get a sheep's foot because I had a three inch slicer, but I don't know that that three inch slicer was pretty good. But my ex, my, uh, yeah, my, uh, 0562 tie is the, basically the slicer grind. I'd probably get the sheep's foot just to be different, but if you don't have either of them, I'd get the skinny. But the hinderer Jurassic, I don't know what that one is. Hey, the feet of sheep, poor sheep. Poor sheep. Jay got the purple Manix 110. Love it. Yeah, that that's a really good configuration that uh, Spider Code does. Those Blurple S, S110V knives are all. It's uh, usually the best value you can get in buying any of their. If it's available in that format and you're only going to buy one, that's usually the one that I recommend people get. That's not a sprint, you know, of the production ones. Not of the sprints. Of the sprints, I think I like the crew wear ones, but. You need a Paisan in your life. It's great. I'm going to have one in a couple of days. It is not mine. Um, another YouTuber is loaning me uh, his. Um, but uh, I'm excited to try it out. So, Oh, thanks for the kick in, Sean. I appreciate it. Yeah, the Super Chat is open if anyone's kicking a few shekels. I always forget to mention that. Uh, you ever tried Victory's Sour Monkey? I don't like sour. I don't like anything that says sour in it and beer. I, I avoid. Victory makes good beer, though, but I don't like sours. Not my thing. What about the fire tag? I never held one. I'm eager to, but uh, yeah. I'm sure I'll have another hinder in my life at some point. But I I just got this one, so I don't know. I, I'm a hinderer, full-on hinderer Jones is satisfied. We're going to have the 0562 tie. That's kind of enough for a bit. I kind of want to get, like I said, I never had a Medford. Um, yeah, mostly a sharp maker. I do have a, Lansky thing, but I hardly ever use it. Anything that the sharp maker can't handle, I I have 
friends very close to me that are basically next day air and I just send stuff to them and, and get it if I need something really redone. But that rarely is. I have so many knives. I just don't really, normally there's not much. I have all the, every accessory you can possibly get for the sharp maker and it does most of what I need because I keep stuff really touched up and strap blocks and stuff. But I am, I am slowly transitioning to freehand sharpening. So, um, I bought some stones. I don't have them in this room. I had them downstairs using the kitchen knives and they're still down there. I don't remember what kind they were. I did buy some good stones that some people recommended to me and I'm getting there. I haven't bothered to put, I haven't dared put any of my nice knives on them yet, but uh, I'm learning it. I'm learning it. I figured rather than go to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take the giant jump and try freehand. So we will see. We will see. One of my friends is also always Tormek shopping. He's one of the guys that has sharpened stuff up for me in the past, and he's talking about getting a Tormek. But uh, I don't, I do not trust myself with a Tormek. I think I would just destroy things because that just burns through metal so quick. Um, get some Ganzos and Sharpen, but then I give money to Ganzo even if I destroyed them. I don't want to do that. No, I, I have I have cheap knives I could use on. I've got a bunch. Um, how comfortable is that Wee in your hand? It's pretty good. I did the review of it. Um, it's not bad at all. the The pocket clip is very nicely shaped and nicely located. Because on small knives, you always worry about that. If the pocket clip's going to be a hot spot and stuff, it isn't. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. I'm a big fan. I actually have two uh, full or two regular full-on Wii's now in my in my regular collection. I usually don't. I usually only have like one and then some Civivis or something. But I actually have two now. Back up to and and it's nothing never nothing to knock Wii. We make some awesome stuff, but it's just uh, they keep coming so fast and furious. That I just always wind up selling them and getting something else. Yeah, the Malice is just so gorgeous. That Flame Anno. It's a good knife, too, but that Flame Anno is enough to keep it around for a few months anyway. I'm, I may not keep it forever, but um, it'll be around for a few months just because of that Flame Anno. It's just so pretty. Uh, ever hear of a Salus from Italy? I have, I have not. But, the, yeah, I like the Ferrum Forge guys, and I, th I think that this... This is the best thing we makes. I love the, don't get me wrong, I love the schism too, but I think this is the best thing we makes. The only thing that bothers me about the schism is why does the schism not have this awesome blade finish? Wouldn't this wouldn't this finish look so much better than that polished y bead blasty stupid thing? It would just look so much better. This is a classy knife, and I just I've never had any problem with this finish as far as like corroding or anything like that, but it's just, yeah, just put this on it. You guys, you guys have shown us you can make an awesome satin finish. You've shown us the light. Put it on the schism. Um, hey, Knife Crazy, how's it going, man? Uh, this is hollow ground. The schism is very hollow ground. This is flat. You... I say go black coated, and I say go home, sir. You've had enough. Go home, sir. Mike Elmer, that name sounds familiar. Oh, yeah, happy Memorial Day, everybody. That, too. We is top of the list at the moment for China knives. That is an indisputable fact, I, I do believe. Even if you think that you don't like Wii knives, you probably own one and just don't know it because they make everybody's everything. If you buy anything in that 250 to 350 range, no matter whose name is on it, and it's made in China, there's a 70% chance it's made by Wii. <laughs> They're making everybody's everything. What? Brian and Doe's are made by Wii. All the Farm Forge stuff is made by Wii, including this Wii that is designed by Farm Forge. You know, they just make everybody's everything. All the little, like the HEA designs, uh, Boost, every they make everybody's everything. Hey Eugene, nice to see ya. Yeah, all the all the drop stuff is is. Hey, I said drop instead of mass drop. Yeah, all the drop stuff is is uh, we everything is. Uh, I thought BN. I don't know who BN you're talking about. It was, was Riyadh. 
don't know. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, you're right. Nado is Riot now. You're right. I'm sorry. He did one through Wii, I believe. I think I think maybe the first one was Wii. But you're right. You are right, James. Yeah. He does Riot now. I forgot about that. Or maybe he worked with Wii and didn't use them. I don't know. There was some Wii thing, but yeah. You are correct, James. You are correct. Waiting in my Mordax, not made by Wii. Yep, that's. I have one of those. Um, I have one of the prototypes. Uh, I'm switching it in for a production one, though. Because they made a few little changes, and I want to correct one for when I put it on video and all that stuff. And I'm not allowed to sell the prototype, so it's not like I could invest, you know, hold on to it and hope it's worth some money because it's a prototype or anything. So I just thought I'd rather switch it back. Yeah, the buck is pretty great. Just grabbed a Crux. Crux are very nice. I had, uh, to me, the flipper tab was a critical flaw, but that's that's just me. But most people love the Crux. Thank you, Jeremy. Happy holiday weekend to you as well. Do, does anybody have to work tomorrow? I do. I'm self-employed, so I definitely do. But anybody get the day off tomorrow? I know it sucks that, like, the mail's closed, or mail's closed, bank's closed, and everything, and you still got to go to work. You get the day off, and you're in Canada. Oh, you have to work, and you're in Canada. I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sale, bench made and payout lately used $120. I am not going to uh, recommend that sale, Super Steel Steve. I am not going to recommend that. Uh, if you're lucky, your wife will shave your leg with your bucks. I don't, I don't get what the point of that comment is. If you're referring to something I didn't see. Um, working tomorrow, on call, hotels don't, don't sleep. That's true. That is true. My wife's got the day off, I, th I think. I'm not sure. Oh, 118. Wow, you're really coming down on it. And you're such a gentleman. I think, I think you should just keep that around as a mascot. I think it's worth more as a mascot than what you get, what you get for it. Uh, looking to get something under like 70. Thinking about Artisan, just don't know. I assume it to say about the D2. Uh, love the Arkeo and the Shark. I haven't held the Arkeo. The Shark was okay. I, I remember it was really thick behind the edge. It's six days until the check. The Brew Bush Ice. I'm not following that. Um... It is a historic knife, yeah. So very angry, Steve gets. Well, you were actually just laughing the whole time. So very, what did you say, passionate? Is that what you decided to... Uh, um, your message got held, Strongbow, because you, you said a bad, you said a bad word. Um... What else do you guys want to talk about tonight? Um, there was something else specific I did want to bring up, and now I now it escapes my mind. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, I was so mad. I did a double disassembly video um, on was it Thursday? I think I recorded it, and it came out so good. I thought it went awesome. I actually had an issue that I fixed and everything. It was going to be a very good educational disassembly with because i'm doing a comparison between these two later this week the north arm skaha and the um and the uh southern grind spider monkey i shot the whole damn thing in slow-mo <laughs> so, i don't know how i manage that so it's useless so i gotta do something else i'm gonna do some disassembly video this week but i don't know what it was Slow. If you're on an iPhone, slow mo and video are right next to each other, and if you accidentally just scroll just a little bit, you hit slow mo instead of video, and it's so goddamn annoying. And the light looks just like it does if you're on video, so you don't know until you're done. What's the brew tonight? Well, it was Scotch, but I drank all of it. I just had one little bottle left of the uh, Belvini Caribbean cask, and um, then I. Uh, Switch back to the same one I had the last couple of weeks. I still have, I bought a 12 pack of it and I just still have some of it. So the Ruby Red Kolsch. This is the last one though. Yep, smooth move. That was uh, not cool. I was so mad. 
It's so mad. And like, it's a disassembly video. You can't redo it. It's just dumb if you redo it. So, because then it's clear everything's off. Because I hadn't torn it. I hadn't torn either of these apart. So, well, I torn this apart, but a really long time ago. And I hadn't ever torn this apart. And it was, it, oh, it was so good. And then I just totally bend it. I was so pissed. But I'll do, uh, I'll tear some other stuff apart. I don't know. What stuff do you guys want to see torn apart? I kind of did a quick one with the Anthem. That was because you don't really take it apart. Um, I don't know. A lot of stuff is pretty easy. Don't say a bench made because I'm not doing it. Um, I, I, I'll just, it'll just be sweary and awful and it'll get, it'll get me banned from the internet. Give me ban the spider monkey. Yeah, I can do that. I can do it again, I guess. I just did it. I, but, uh, I might still just redo the same video and just explain because they're going to be very clean inside. But, uh, they're both really easy to take apart. Both quite easy. Uh, this one, a little less. You kind of have to pop the scales apart every time. It's got, like, these, these, you know, the, uh, barrel spacers embed in the carbon. And you kind of always got to give them a little pop to get them apart, which is slightly annoying. But other than that. They're both super easy to take apart. This is a proprietary tool, but it works well. Yeah, Benchmade disassembly is the sweariest thing in the history of mankind. How about an old spider coat with red Loctite? I don't have any, thank God. I did deal with one one time, though. I did deal with one one time, and it spent um, a lot of time under a soldering iron and stuff to get it apart. My old... Uh, my first... Um, PM2, I had the uh, PM2 Blurple 110, and it was, I bought it like two years ago, and it had been sitting on a shelf for a year, and it was, uh, that thing was a pain in the ass to take apart. Oh, autos are a pain too. I've only taken apart one, but it was a pain. Anything under spring tension is, is a pain in the arse. Well, we're all very proud of you, Jeremy Russell, that you don't have an issue with this assembly of axis lock knives. I just, I just, my, my fingers just don't, it's, it's not even the, the spring isn't the problem. It's just always getting that one screw in. It's always such a pain in the ass. There's always the one, where is, do I have an axis lock runner somewhere? I just had it, there it is. It's always this screw, like getting this one in there is a, always a, on one side or the other is just a pain in the ass. I don't know what it is about that one screw, especially on like the bug out or something where there's not, it's not as hard on the 940 because you've got the other one back here supporting it too, but the one, the, any bench made with half liners, oh my God. Um, do I have a, do, did I get the Kapara? Yes, I've done several, rev several videos about the Kapara and I still have it and I still love it very much. Um, do you still like KPL or go back to nano oil? I have the KPL, I still use it probably 80% of the time. Sometimes I use... The heavyweight nano oil or the lightweight nano oil or the nano grease. But um, I don't, still don't have the heavier weight KPIL. I need to get some of that. Um, I wanted to make all the springs like the Anthem. Well, it would have to, they'd all have to be integrals or some form of it because it attaches back here. I mean, I guess you can make it attach on the side. I guess there's no reason why you couldn't. Yeah, I guess there is no reason why you couldn't. Yeah, I guess I don't, I guess, I guess I don't freaking know, Ronan. <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is so much better. I don't know why they don't do them all that way. I thought I had an answer, and then I realized it wasn't a good answer. Um, this bought a soldering, yeah, bought, yeah, soldering irons are great for freeing up, freeing up stuck screws. The bidding is never open. I am going to have a knife sale, I th believe, Wednesday night. Wednesday or Thursday night. And uh, there are a couple things that are going to be surprising that are on it. There are going to be a couple things that are surprising on it. I could, I actually have them all set. No, minus a couple. I was going to say I had them all set aside, but I don't have them all set aside. I was going to do a quick wave by, but... um. I don't have them all set aside. The Skaha is not on it. Um, I can tell you that right now. Um, what are you most looking forward to see at Blade Show? Um, mostly the people, honestly. There aren't that many knives that... Um, 
I've seen coming because I don't think they've released everything yet. I think this is the week we're going to see all the crazy stuff. There's some crazy custom stuff I'm very eager to see, uh, but I'm sure I'm not going to buy. I know uh, Custom Mike's Factory showed a few things that look really cool. Um, um, I do know one one that I'm not allowed to talk about that I think is going to be very cool. Um, but mostly it's meeting people. I haven't met anybody face to face, so. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you're going to tear down your 0450 for a lube and clean tonight. That'll take about 10 minutes. Those are so easy. Most ZTs are so easy to take apart. You won't tell, but the internet will tell. The internet, but the internet knows. Um, but no, I'm not selling the Skaha. I'm not that desperate, but I am selling a few things that I didn't plan on selling, um, this quickly stuff that I didn't think I'd keep forever, but uh, it's Blade Show. Got to have that. Got to have that walking around money at Blade Show because who knows what's going to strike me. Got to feed the beasts. I may not wind up buying. I may only want buying one buying one knife. I know I really want to get a Medford Slim Midi, and unless it disappoints me, I will probably get it. Um, or unless something in that same price range blows my socks off. But uh, other than that. Um, a lot of the stuff I want to get for the channel will be production, which means it's not going to be available because that's just the nature of trade shows. They show things that aren't available yet. So, um, so I'll see all kinds of cool stuff, but I, and I want to buy it to review on the channel right away, but they'll say no. And that's how I'm guessing it's going to go anyway. So we'll see. I'm going to try and get, try and get some stuff. So. How drop shutty was the G10 Shark? Man, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and watch my own video. So, uh, can we get a sneak preview of what of well, what I'm selling? I don't have it all out. I thought I had it all out, but I don't. It's missing a few. Now, now you can wait. You can wait. I'm missing a few. I put a. I did another video that's got a couple of the other ones in it. So, um. But yeah, a couple of limited ones. I always wind up selling limited stuff. I don't know why. I'm not selling my limited PM2 though, because I love that Crewwear PM2. But um, a couple of limited ones, a couple that I'm selling just because I want another color of it or something like that. So uh, yeah, no, no teaser. I gotta be fair, man. You you guys would be surprised how angry people get when a. I had one guy just livid with me because I put a for sale video up. He said, I saw it and I went to go back and buy it two hours later and the video was taken down. I was like, yeah, when everything is sold, I take the video down. That's because if you leave the video up, no matter if you mark everything is sold, people still keep emailing you and asking you if you sold it or not. So I take the video, I delete the video as soon as everything is sold. But um, yeah. One of these days, I just want to drop something insane there instead of just grabbing a random knife and putting it there. Like, one day I want to drop, like, uh, I don't have it anymore. I already boxed it up. That, that guy loaned me the Shimwari. I, but I want to do one of my own. Just drop something crazy expensive. Just boom. But you know what? I get the impression that a lot of you guys don't care as much about um, the expensive stuff. So that's why I don't do as much of it. That's why I try and stick in that, you know, 50 to $200 range with some rare exceptions. Because it seems like that's what you guys really prefer more, so. My spider monkey has a shallow lockup. Yeah, mine mine isn't isn't super super uh late either, but the liners on this are so thick. I did the stupid spine thwacky stuff with it. I meant to mess message you about this, Zach, and I think I mentioned it in the review. Um it's never it's never been a problem. It's it locks up, it stays locked up, it's perfectly fine. The these the you can't really call this a liner lock. If, for how thick these liners are, it really isn't. And I've never had never had a problem. Yeah, I, I whack the snot out of mine, and it's, it doesn't let go. But it does look shallow. I thought the, the first, I thought the same thing, too, when I first got it home. I was got back to the hotel room with it, I guess. I was out in Utah, but I was like, ah, but it's never been. Yeah, it's a covered frame lock. And if that was a frame lock, you wouldn't think anything about that much of it on there. Yeah, the Prolite is a really nice knife. I've never uh, owned one, but I did play with one a little bit. One of my friends has one. It's pretty nice. 
Are you going to do a comparison of the Civivi Isham knives on tomorrow at eight o'clock? I already recorded it. I just have to, it's it's already recorded and scheduled and everything. So tomorrow at eight, yeah, I'm doing a little video of all the uh, Civivi Isham knives. I will tell you that that's your sale preview. Is I am selling one of them. So I am selling one of the Civivi Isham knives. You'll be able to figure out from when you watch the thing. I like all of them, but I don't need three. I don't need all three. I don't need the complete set. It's not Pokemon. It's knives. Maybe, Mikey. We will see. We will see. I will tell you. I'll make it down to a 50-50. It ain't the McKenna, because this is just so much fun. And it's named after my daughter. I think my daughter would be really mad at me if I sold this. Oh, man, I have heartburn. Drinking straight scotch after I ate four slices of pizza gives you heartburn. Who'd have known that? Who'd have known that? What am I vaping on? Uh, it's just the same thing as always. Tsunami. Tobacco flavor. Um, yeah, Civivi's D2 is pretty good, and I know I watched those I watched those uh, LTK videos and you were just the tests and stuff, and um, and I know it tested really well, too. So it tested exactly as it should be. What are you going to watch tonight now that Game of Thrones is done? Um, nothing, probably, honestly. I got so much work to do tomorrow, I'm probably going to go to sleep. But, um, the, I don't know, I've been watching uh, What We Do in the Shadows. That show is freaking awesome. It's so funny. It's that, like, fake vampire documentary thing. It was, there's a movie called What We Do in the Shadows that was a fake vampire documentary. And um, now they made it into a TV series on FX, and it is hilarious. It's got Matt Berry in it, one of my favorite actors, British actor, and he is so freaking funny. What about the Stedman? I don't, I don't review Stedman's. Yeah, Barry is awesome, but Barry's over now, too. Isn't it? I don't know what Barry's got. No, Barry, yeah, Barry had the season finale, didn't it? I think Barry had the season finale. A special Game of Thrones episode tonight where they where they make everybody happy. Yeah, Ronan, the movie for what we do in the shadows was hilarious. And if anything, the TV show is better. I have to say the TV show is excellent. It's really, really good. Ugh, Pepto-Bismol. Ugh, I hate Pepto-Bismol. I just take Zantac. If I have heartburn, I can't stand Pepto. God, this stuff is disgusting. Um, it's just a long behind-the-scenes docu show tonight. Oh, is it really? I thought you were making a joke. Hung was hilarious, but didn't. Oh yeah, I guess I'll watch that. Yeah, I'll watch that. I'll watch a behind-the-scenes thing. I guess. I don't like vampires, but what we do in the shadows is very, very funny. They make fun of the whole vampire genre, and it's just, it's just hilarious. And it's got Matt Berry in it, who I just love the way, I just love his accent. Anything he says is so funny. I can't think of anything right now that isn't too vulgar, but uh, yeah, it's very, very funny. Literally never watched a minute in a Game of Thrones. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss, Ronan. I do a joke about hipsters that act like they're so cool um, that when they don't watch stuff. Not saying you were running, but you always get that. You talk about Star Wars like, I've never even seen Star Wars. Like, Shut up. Yes, you have. Stop being cool. You think you're cool because you haven't seen Star Wars? You know what? I can't read. How about that? It's true. I can read. But um, documentary isn't going to make anybody happier. I thought the ending of Game of Thrones was fine. It wasn't great, but it was fine. It was fine. I, it wasn't like amazing, but what are you gonna do? They made them. They made them wrap it up in a short amount of. And what was it? They gave them eight episodes. What are they gonna do? I thought it was fine. Does the VV D two rust easily? Not in my experience, but I admit I haven't. The longest I've owned a VV D two right now is that Anthropos. I've had that for a while, but um, I know um, was it D two? Didn't. Didn't we do a D2? 
I feel like they did. I had that one for a while. I thought they're $100 ones for D2. I could be wrong, but... I know the D2 tests well. It's, it's all it's supposed to be, but I put that Aegis stuff on everything, and it's always fine. Um, what's the first knife on the left? This is uh, American Buffalo Knife and Tool, or ABKT uh, Warthog. The review of this will be up this week sometime. Pretty cool. It's just, you know, your normal... It's an American company, but your normal Chinese-made D2 ball-bearing flipper, about what you'd expect, but uh, I do really like the blade on it. It's got a really nice blade. I just like that blade shape. And and this thumb hole is freaking cool as hell because it's so tiny, it looks use, useless and ornamental. But man, it is perfectly placed, and the way they've milled it out, it's super easy to use, and it's just this tiny little hole. And it's so easy to use, that's what she said. Um, it might be made by Best Tech, it kind of feels like maybe it is. It looks like their G10. It looks kind of like their hardware. Could be. It's them or San Ramu if I had to take a guess who makes it. I hate the font on it, but other than that, it's pretty cool. Um, the worst D2 I had was Steel Will. I think they've changed theirs, but uh, I, I never had a problem with it, period, but... You know, the first person I've heard say that. Um, oh, thanks, Planes Crafter. Yeah, the uh, Super Chat is open if anyone wants to kick in a few shekels. I'm going gonna, gonna to wrap this up fairly soon. But, um, um, that's what I mean. The, I'm going to have to approve your comment because you said a swear. Yeah, that's what I mean. The showrunners only gave him that many episodes. What do you think? I mean, the showrunners got other stuff to do. They're making a Star Wars movie. How long do you want them to stick with something? I don't know. I thought it was fine. I, I didn't mind the ending. There was only a couple people who I didn't like what, ha what happened to them, but I didn't mind the the big ending. I thought that was fine, and I it, it was fine. I didn't love it. It was fine. Not everything can be Breaking Bad. New budget steel could be BD1N. Yeah, I know that's I know that um Spiderco has said that's what they're slowly transitioning all their budgety US stuff anyway to BD1N. I wish they'd do it with the overseas stuff, but we will see. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Just getting Chinese knives, the Riot Chavez Ultramars and press. Yeah, I, I really want a Chavez, but man, I can't get past that pocket clip. I don't want to walk around with a skull sticking out of my pocket. I just know if I own one, I'd never carry it because of that. So I'm not buying one. It's just not my aesthetic. I don't want to walk around with a skull sticking out of my pocket. It's just me. I just, I just wish it had a normal looking pocket. I don't mind if that skull was even just printed on it, but the way that it is, that big machined skull, that's a bit much for me. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, it's, it's just screaming. It's just screaming, you know, look what's in my pocket. Better Call Saul is good, too. I do like Better Call Saul. Is that back yet? I don't, I don't think it comes back for a little bit. Um... Yeah, I do like Better Call Saul. I, I, I maintain that Mike Ehrman Trout is <laughs> probably the best single character ever written for television. Are you liking your wee schism? I am. I'm gonna. It's right here. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be keeping it for a while. So I just. I just made the list of all the stuff I'm selling before I go to Blade Show, and it's not on it. So that's good. I do wish that the blade was satin, but other than that, um, I do really like it. It's a, such a slicey little thing. Wow. It is a laser beam. And then, of course, the thumb studs are sharp, but maybe my fingers are going numb or I'm getting a callus or something. <laughs> they don't bother me quite as much as they used to, but still a little bit. The skull sticking out of the pocket reminds me of the 80s guys with a lightning bolt earring. Same style, same maturity level. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just don't like it. I just, just print it, print the skull on it. Fine. I'm all right. But. Yeah. The McKenna's growing in it. Yeah, it's a really cool knife. It is. Uh, that pocket clip could stand to be smaller or shorter or something. I don't know, but um, you can feel the pocket clip. But the way you actually use it, you're honestly, 
I'm normally almost kind of like three fingering it and it, you don't really notice it at all. But when you actually bear down and squeeze on it, it's not comfortable. Um, do any of you guys own the ZT-02? Is that the little bitty one? No, I don't. I know, I know a couple of people that do, and I know one hated it and sold it immediately, and one absolutely loves it. And I know the, uh, the guy at, uh, uh, yeah, Witty at USA Made Blade really likes it. Hey, Lemon, how's it going? Unfortunately, we're going to wrap up here fairly soon, but we'll be still on for a little bit. Yeah, if you're front, front flipper curious, this is the uh, the McKenna is is the one to get. It's, it's cheap. It's pretty cool. It's pretty pretty cool. It's super easy. It's just the easiest front flipper because it has an actual proper tab, and it's you know past the pivot and all that. And it's just as I fail it because I got my finger pinched in it. It just the D10 is awesome. It's just it's just great. It's a fun little thing. Can't stand knives that don't allow four finger grip. This this does for my hands. And you can kind of choke up on it, but I wouldn't recommend it. But it allows all four of my fingers on it. Um and uh ZT is too wedgy a grind for a small knife. I just didn't like the look of it. That's so I never even held one. See you, Robert. And thanks, Lemon. Appreciate that. And do what I can do. What about the Wii 703, good sir? I don't remember which one that is, if I've had one or not. You put the Rake P801 blue clip on your backlash. I took my P801 blue clip and unblued it. How do you do that? Unblue it? Um, do you still EDC your Manix? I didn't much this winter, um, but summertime I will, because it's my biggest my biggest lightweight knife. So when it's 80 degrees out and I'm out working in the garage, that gets a whole lot of work, or a whole lot of use. Uh, yeah, it probably would. It probably would look cool on it. I took a Dremel and took all the blue off of mine, though. I wish you could get, well, I mean, they're not using them as much anymore, but I don't like the Civivi titanium clips. I don't like it when they do those. I wish they would sell these clips for the other ones. No Game of Thrones to get to. No, no need, no need to rush off, except for that I'm exhausted. But uh, we had a lot of thunderstorms yesterday, and even though the thunderstorms were long gone, my, my, uh, Little doggy decided she did not want to sleep last night. It was running all over the bed and driving us all crazy. 98? Wow. It's uh, like 80 here. That's another reason why I'm going to wrap up here fairly shortly is because uh, in order to do videos, I have... So I, I have my office slash knife... The knife attic, as I call it, um, is an attic. And the window is too small to put an air conditioner unit in. So I have an air conditioner unit in the hallway and I have a series of fans that go down the hallway into the attic. It's one of those attics that's on the same level as everything else. You know what I mean? Um, it just has a, like a smaller, like a slightly smaller than normal door. And, uh, I have a series of fans that channel air and cold air into here. But, uh, when I do live shows or record something, I have to close my door. So it just slowly gets very, very hot. So far, it's it's relatively okay, but it's getting a bit warm. Um, the Spyderco wire clips and and the bug out. Yep, those are those are two awesome clips. The bug out clip and the wire clip. Very much. Thanks, boss. I appreciate it. Wasn't sure you would do it with the holiday. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's it's a holiday, but I'm not gonna say it's not a real holiday. It's a real holiday, but I mean it's it's not Christmas or you know anything like that. So. Yeah, I'll still do it. And then next week I will be doing it, and then the next week I obviously won't because I will be at Blade Show. The only way that I will do it next week is if um, I decide for some reason to skip Sunday, which I can't imagine that I would, and I'm in a hotel somewhere on the way home. That would be the only reason that I would uh, do one the Sunday 
of the last day of Blade Show, but I highly doubt that will be the case. So do not plan on one this Sunday of Blade Show. Hey, Sam, welcome. I'm just wrapping up. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, the trivia question. Let me do that one more time. Got to do that before we go. Uh, I haven't done one of these giveaways in so long because I was out of Weeha stuff, and now that I got it back again, I keep forgetting. We have, it's going to be a three set, not two, of a Weeha, these little uh, wing torx drivers of the T6, T8, and T10. All you got to do is answer the trivia question, which is, and don't answer it in the live comments, Wait until we get down, uh, and wait until it's over, and you can comment down below. The trivia question is, Elijah Isham named this, this knife the McKenna. What is the McKenna after? What is the McKenna named after? What is the McKenna named after? Um, do a live from the floor at Blade. I'd probably not. I might do something on Instagram or something, but... I'm not going to do YouTube. I don't know what their Wi-Fi situation is like there. I know they have it, but we'll see what it is. Wire clips bend easy if you EDC every day. I've never had a wire clip bend from Spyderco. Uh, what do you most want to see at Blade Show? I answered this a little bit before, but um, yeah, I, just, I mostly just want to meet people. I, the people I just haven't met. Um... There hasn't been a whole lot that's come out that I'm super... It's like stuff that I already know exists that I just have never touched. So, we'll see. Internet quality is probably going to suck at Blade. Probably. My LTE is pretty good but um, on my phone, but I don't want to burn up all my data doing live shows because I'm probably going to burn up a lot of my data uploading videos for you guys. So, by the way, don't expect a ton of videos from me at Blade Show. I'm not going to be one of these guys doing four or five a day. I'm hoping the whole weekend I get a total of, like, six. I'll be happy with that. Um... It's, uh, this is my first one, so I did buy a new microphone for my, my phone. I upgraded my phone. It's very annoying right now because tomorrow's a holiday and my brand new iPhone XS Max is sitting in a delivery place five miles from my house for, through FedEx, and it's not here, but uh, I did, did upgrade the phone, so that's another thing to talk about. That's the thing I want to talk about. I did invest some money in the channel, so we're going to see, um... Uh, is it 10s max whatever the hell they call it i'm gonna call it xs max i don't care um it's gonna be uh i, have, I got the new phone with a better camera although the video quality i've been pretty happy with but this is still an iphone 7 I had it for three years and then i got this new microphone i only don't have it plugged in right now because the battery life on my 7 kind of sucks and obviously if this is plugged in the battery doesn't work but i have recorded a couple videos with it and it works pretty good the only problem is it's excellent audio quality, but it's even quieter than what the built-in mic was, and I don't, can't figure out how to jack the volume up on it. I gotta figure that out. Something quick I can do on my phone, because I don't want to have to edit, send video to my freaking computer, and then I know how to adjust it on iPhoto on there, but or on iMovie on there, but you know what I mean. I just wanted something I can edit on the fly on my phone to jack the volume up a little bit. But this microphone does make the sound quality is amazing. Um, they won't mind if you self-deliver your phone tonight. Yeah, is, is it illegal if I break in and just steal what I, what's mine? Yeah, but it's all right, because I wouldn't have time to set it up tomorrow. You know, as you get a new phone, it's like an hour, hour and a half long process of transferring everything over. I wouldn't have time to do that tomorrow anyway, so it's okay. Yeah, just avoid the slow-mo. That's not the first time I did that either, because it's just... What, what happens is I start to do a video and I swipe up to get... I'm, I'm moving my fingers off camera where you can't see. I swipe up to get to the menu where I can put an airplane mode. And then when I go back, I don't notice that it is scrolled to slow-mo. Um, Night, Nico. Yeah. I'm sh you, 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 if you haven't done it yet, Zach, you'll do it too. I don't know if you're an iPhone person, but you'll do it too. You'll go through a whole video and then realize you shot the whole damn thing in slow-mo. Grab a Note 10 in August. Then I'd have to use Android. Blech. No, I've, I've just had iPhone since the original. I'm always going to be an iPhone person. I know how they work. I don't need to learn anything. Don't need to learn anything. Don't like learning new, uh, new computers and stuff. And I'd have to buy so many apps. Uh... 
I looked at the Sure Mode of MV88, but that's very expensive. Uh, that's like 180. This was 80. This is better. And and all the reviews I said said this was 90% as good. So we will see. I've shot some little test videos with it. It definitely is better recording my videos. And then I shot some stuff just joke interviewing my kids. And um, it picked up both the person talking and the per and me behind the camera. And that's what I got it for. It was mostly for Blade Show. So hopefully that's going to work good. We will see. We will see. But we're going to wrap this up now. It's been an hour and 15 minutes. I think that is long enough. For me to sit here and annoy everybody. Um, I hope you guys are, have a good Memorial Day weekend. I hope you don't have to work tomorrow. I know a lot of us probably still have to, but uh, I hope you guys have a good a good Memorial Day. If, if you have not already gone eating some burgers and stuff, I hope you get a chance to do that tomorrow. I know I had a pretty good one. Went with my in-laws yesterday, and but tomorrow I got to work my butt off. So hope you guys have a better tomorrow than I am going to have. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. I do always appreciate it. It's always a good time. Have a good one. Good night, everybody.